So thank you for the introduction. I'm Caterina. I'm talking to you from Portugal, Cascais to be more specific. And thank you so much for having me here. Today, I'm going to talk about the role of nurses in preventing comorbidities. Tobacco and alcohol consumption. Does five minutes really makes a difference in our practice? So before moving on to action, I must mention the key facts regarding consumption. As we all know, smoking is the leading cause of preventable death, and we can do something about this. Tobacco causes more than 8 million deaths per year. Around 1.2 million deaths are a result of non-smokers being exposed to secondhand smoke. Alcohol, as we all know, holds an important role in social engagement and bonding for many, but it leads to 3 million deaths every year. More than 200 diseases and injuries are caused by alcohol. Of the global burden of disease and injury, 5.1% is attributed to alcohol. Health promotion is a key aspect of care, we all agree, and nurses are in the ideal position for promoting healthy lifestyles. The nurse role in the interaction with people is evidenced throughout four key aspects regarding the family, the community, and the individual itself. So, the knowledge and proximity to patients, family, and community as nurse have is really important for us to make a change. Also, our practice is based in holistic care, taking the individual and the family as a whole. And the training that we have for health promotion and education is vital. And I believe that nurses are really good and unique on understanding perspectives. So, as we all know, life has lots of surprises and challenges, putting our goals into perspectives more often than we wish. So we have to take advantage of that. How? We take every contact from healthcare professionals and patients, making them important, and we should be looking out for teachable moments because when a life transition happens, most individuals really spontaneously want to change and as HCP and in line with a constructive intervention, we need to take advantage of these transition moments to get health gains and make individuals want to change to be healthier. So I believe people can change their behaviors. And for this to happen, it's necessary to be present readiness, willingness, and the ability to change. Formal interventions facil facilitate a natural change, and this is what we are going through. When we have the previous factors that can influence the interventions to promote healthy lifestyles, and when line up with teachable moments, we end up, we end up having a tipping point. And talking about the tipping point comes the opportunistic interventions. And this is turning every contact with healthcare professionals in a moment for opportunity to make decisions for better health throughout brief interventions. So we should inquire about tobacco and alcohol consumption and the possibility of carrying out a brief intervention to do so. Just to share some key facts regarding screening and brief interventions, they are aimed to identify a current or potential problem, are not intended to treat, but to help understand and motivate those at risk to change, and takes about five minutes. And going to action now, I'm going to show you that this can be done. The rule is, in every visit with HCP, make five minutes for opportunistic intervention. For tobacco consumption, for example, we need to ask, do you or you do not smoke? And register the number of cigarettes, vaping, or electronic cigars that people do. If it is a former smoker, we need to register how long has it stopped and reinforce the health decision. So after we ask, we need to act. And this is a 30 second intervention and minimum strategy for every visit. A key question to act is for example, how did you start, when did you start to smoke every day? And normally people stop for a second, take the math and take conscience and realize how long have they been smoking. And this is us fishing for a tipping point. 
So continue on acting for quitting smoke. Quitting smoke, we move on from two A's to five A's. And then we are going to advise on the benefits of cessation. Patients need to be informed. After we are going to assess the motivation and remember people change behaviors easier when is present the readiness, willingness and ability for that change. When all is aligned and set, we, see, we assist the patient for the stopping attempts, aiding as we can or referring to other professionals, for example, for pharmaceutical strategy. We finalize by a range, and this is a follow-up to evaluate the process because it's really necessary to keep the positive reinforce. The guidelines of the European AIDS Clinical Society also base the smoking secession in the need to ask and act strategy. For the alcohol consumption, the World Health Organization created the screening tool, Alcohol Use Disorders Identification Test. And audit is a gold standard for alcohol-related problems, but is a 10-question maybe too long for many settings. And so who is also aligned with the lack of time that healthcare professionals have and manage to put the screening of alcohol consumption in three questions. How often do you have a alcoholic drink? How many, how many units a day? How often have more than on a single occasion in the last year? six units of alcohol drink for women and eight units for alcohol for men. Regarding the score, the HCP can identify the risk from low to addicted, when higher and dependent score is necessary to refer to a specialist consult. Also, AACS guidelines adopt the brief screening, as you can see. All Healthcare professionals are focused in healthy aging, and for this to happen, we need to prevent diseases. Tobacco and alcohol consumption can be addressed in five minutes. Nurses can promote healthy lifestyle, and for that, we need to actively involve the people living with HIV for a shared decision making, because when more informed people are, better decision they will do. We need strategies that allow active participation and adherence. We have to be a realistic advice, a tailored care plan, clear, incisive, non-judgmental and empathic approach can make a difference because we want success and for success, we all need to be dancing and not fighting. Thank you so much.